Hello and welcome to a new series of video about alternating current. We're starting to talk about AC, right? Up to now we talked about DC, yeah, direct current. We said, okay, that the current or that the voltage and so on, this was not changing. Maybe once when we switched and we charged, or decharged something, a capacitor and, and, and a, a, a coil or... Doesn't really matter, yeah? Did not really change, yeah? Uh, now, starting from now, at least in this series of videos, and I think the next one also at least, uh, we're talking about alternating current AC. Therefore, we have to think, what is alternating current? Yeah? So, I already said it has something to do with change. Yeah? Direct current does not change. So, alternating current does change. How does it change? Well, I'm noting now some, some things just to, to mention where we are, yeah, to give a big overview. Yeah, because the most stressful or most, I don't want to call them ugly, but actually ugly to describe, they're hard to describe, are non-deterministic deterministic signals. Yeah. So we have non Deterministic. They are not determined. This is what the name is telling. Yeah? They are not specified. They are not. We cannot tell if we know the signal at one point in time. We cannot tell how big it will be in the next second, microsecond, in the next moment. We cannot tell this. It's not deterministic. It's not specified. It's not, it's not following rules. Well, that's not entirely correct, because there are the nice, you know, call it nice, uh, non-deterministic signal, they are called ergodic. These are the signals where we say, at least we can do a little statistic about them. Yeah? We don't know how the signal will behave, but we know with a certain probability that we will be in that range. 99% uh, chance that we are in that range. Uh, according. Yeah? At least with statistic methods, we can somehow describe the behavior of the signal. Doesn't mean we know what is happening next, but at least it gives us a good feeling. <laughs> and then the real the real signals, uh, which are, they're not ergodic. Huh? Not ergodic. These are the ones I cannot even tell what they are likely to do. Huh? I cannot tell anything about them. I don't know simply what they are doing. Uh, this is some, not, not describable at all. Lucky for us, we don't have to deal with this, because this is not what we understand under alternating current. <laughs> We're talking about deterministic signals. We had deterministic signals, we had there was already some change. Change, I already said, okay, what is about charging? A capacitor, yeah? charging a coil with magnetism, charging a capacitor with electric charge. Yeah? This is deterministic. There was a change and I exactly know when I know one condition, I know the rule, then I know or I know one situation of the signal and I know the rule, why, how it is behaving, because it's specified, it's determined. Yeah? Then I know what will happen next. Yeah? Calculatable. And what I mentioned first, these are non periodic. Huh? Non periodic. Non periodic signals. These are transitions. Huh? In example, as mentioned, charge. of a capacitor. This would be this would be a typical deterministic signal. Okay? 
So I already wrote here non-periodic. So there are also periodic signals. Huh? This was friendlier than this. Is this friendlier than this? What is the difference? What is... Does it mean that the signal is periodic? Well, there is a rule. It's called the signal at a certain time, t, yeah, is exactly the signal which, was, which it was a big t time before. Yeah? So it's repeating itself. This is true for the whole signal. So every... every position of the signals, we are just repeating what was already there. This is periodic. Yeah? And this T here, this is called periodic duration. Hmm? Periodic duration. And it's, this means exact. Yeah? This means exact, exactly repeating itself. There are also things which seem to repeat itself, but not exactly. One instance, uh, one for instance, is uh, the temperature. The temperature outside, it's not from, from electrotechnic, but, but all right, just to, to give you an impression. So one day, and the day it's hot, during the night it's colder. Huh? So it, the day if you write the temperature, it will get hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Yeah? And it looks periodic because it has a periodic duration of around 24 hours. But some days it's getting hotter, some days it's getting not that hot. Yeah? And this is, it's repeating itself, but not exactly. And so this is called quasi-periodic. Yeah? And this is... a non-periodic signal. Yeah? However, we are dealing with periodic signals. This is our, so I will make here the border so that I somehow can indicate we are looking at this. Now I draw a signal and we have a look if this condition is fulfilled because this is a periodic signal, right? This is our, what we, what we noted. So let's draw a signal. Here's the time t. Here this shall be the signal x from t. And now I draw the signal. Attention please. Will always stay the same. Is this fulfilling this rule? The signal here is the same as yes. It's fulfilling the rule. This is fulfilling the rule. Yeah, it is fulfilling the rule, but only on the paper. Yeah, because this is also not what we understand of the alternating current. Yeah, this here is direct. Is a direct, direct quantity. Yeah. The direct quantity. It will stay the same. This is a special case of this, but actually it's covered yeah, by this, uh, by this uh, condition. Huh? So, all right. So, now I'll draw a second signal. T. For X from T. And now I draw the signal. This shall always be the same. Follow. Look at that. Whatever is happening here, is happening here as well. So here, we have our periodic duration. Is this fulfilling this? Yes, it's fulfilling. Because it is repeating itself. Seems to be a periodic signal. Now, draw a next signal.
and it shall look like exactly that, but this time we are changing around zero. Okay, we are changing around zero. But as you can see, we have again a periodic duration. It's also fulfilling this signal. Say so what's what now? Yeah. This here is called direct quantity, and this here is called an alternating quantity. Alternating quantity, the average value. is zero. Here the average value is here, where the areas above and below these average values are, are compensating each other. They are the same areas above and below. Yeah? So the average value is zero. Here, this is not the case. Here, let's have a look. Where is the average value? The average value is here. This is called a pulsating quantity in English. In German it's called Mischgröße, mixed quantity, because actually it's a mixture between this and this. Yeah? In English it's called pulsating because it's pulsating. Yeah? Here we have an average value. which is not equal to zero. Can be also below zero. Doesn't really matter. Right? So actually, what we are talking, really talking about, alternating current AC is an alternating quality, a quantity. All right? So this is, this is what we're talking about. The form of the signals here are drawn like this, this this shape uh, there might be triangles, there might be rectangles, there might be other forms, which the uh, main thing is that to repeat each other and have an average value of zero, then we can call it alternating current. Okay. The most important alternating current is the sinusoidal. Huh? Sin sinus so we the alternating quantity. And there are not non sinusoidal alternating. This is what we're going to talk about. Sinusoidal. Now I spell it a second time because I misspelled here. You know what happens? Yes, this happens. Yeah. C'est la vie, Frenchman says. And the women as well. Yeah. Sinusoidal. This is the most, at least when it comes to power distribution, so this is the most important forever. Yeah. Non this is why it has a known category. Yeah. But actually, we will talk about both. Yeah. Talk about sinusoidal and non sinusoidal alternating current. Yeah. And I've already, uh, already mentioned something. I called it average value. Yeah. Somehow I must give an impression how strong, how powerful, how how good, I don't know, is an uh, uh, alternating current. Yeah? Because I already said, in public power supply, yeah, here in, the, in, the, in my power socket, there's alternating current. Here in Europe, we have 50 Hertz alternating current, and I can, just cannot tell, yeah, the average value is zero. Yes, it's true, the average value is zero. Yeah? But it's, if, if I put my finger in there, yeah, then in best case, it will hurt. In, in, in the worst case, it uh, will never talk again. Huh? So it cannot be zero, just. Huh? 
So there must be some values I can give which somehow represent how strong such AC stuff is. Yeah, so this is uh, names, yeah, terms. Uh, numbers, yeah. Next time, next time we're talking about about categories or Kenwerte. Kenwerte. I have to look this up. I'll look it up. Kenwerte. Specific value. Next time, characteristic values, specific value of alternating current. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.